Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing another episode of Raw and Real. This will be episode two. If you didn't see the last one, I'll make sure to link it down below so you can check that out. That one was all about um, your identity and who you are and really who God says you are. And so go check that out if you'd like to. For today's video, me and my friend Beth, this is Beth by the Hello. way, we are going to be talking all about relationships and singleness and just finding contentment in your singleness and yeah, that's pretty much what today's video is going to be about, getting super raw and real about it. We're just going to get into this. We asked you guys on Instagram actually to ask us some questions and not very many of you asked us questions. We got like two, <laughs> but I have some ideas of just random things we're going to talk about. I think we're just going to like bounce back and forth off of each other and just kind of see what we come up with to talk to you guys about relationships. We are both actually single right now. <laughs> single and content. <laughs> One of the first questions or like responses to the story that I got was, what do you and or how do you manage seasons of want and desire while you're single? And what are some practical ways to keep yourself from falling into the temptation of thinking you need to act upon that desire? I think it's just really talking about like, the moments when you have, I talk with so many guys and girls who hit the place in their life where they're like, I've done so much life already and I'm ready to give love away. Like, I feel ready to give love. Um, and yet the Lord is still in a place where he's asking them to wait. And it's, it's kind of that back and forth of how do I find like when I want something so badly, something that is good, relationships are good, they're healthy. God ordained them, he created them, he designed us to be in communion and relationship with each other. I believe when God said that man was not meant to be alone in the Garden of Eden, he, w he wasn't talking yeah. about just marriage. Yeah. I really think he was talking about humanity in general. We were not meant to do life alone. Right. So how do you like handle the desire for something good when you've been asked to wait. You're asking me that? Well, I'm rephrasing oh. oh, okay, okay. I can just give like a practical example of how I would handle something like that. First off, being content in your singleness. You're, you're only gonna find true contentment in general in life, in God. And I talked about that in my previous episode of, for this. Being content in your singleness is, yeah, you're still gonna have the desire to be in a relationship. Yeah, you still might have feelings for someone come along, but knowing that what you do with those feelings is so important and like if you have feelings for someone but you know that you're content in your singleness that doesn't mean like oh i'm content in my singleness so i'm never gonna have feelings for someone and i'm always gonna be single and i'm always gonna be fine being single and i never want to have someone that's not what that means yeah it means you're okay being single and not having to have the title of oh yeah i have a boyfriend or like having trying to find your contentment or your fulfillment in a person because you found that in god and you've been able to go to god with those feelings that you may have and be like okay god here are these natural feelings that I'm gonna have, they're okay to have, but here they are, I give them back to you, you do with them what your will is for my life. Because acting upon feelings in like your natural feelings can make you do things that you might regret later, or that you would just have never done if you would have just taken those feelings captive and given them to God, because then that allows him to work. And if those feelings are from God, and he's like, yeah, this is your time, like this is your, this is your person, or like this is your time to step out and pursue this, then he'll give you that go ahead. And then you'll have peace about it and you won't be back and forth wondering like, oh, should I act on these feelings? What are these feelings? Why do I have these feelings if I'm truly content in my singleness? You can be content in your singleness and still have feelings for someone. It's just what you do with those feelings. Yeah, that's so true. I just think being like <clears throat> realistic about it. Um, my first practical would just be like, love your heart in that place. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're really good. Like, it's really good that you want to be in a relationship. It's really good that you have this desire. Mm -hmm. The Lord would not give you, like, the desires in your yeah. heart like that are yeah. given to you by God because He wants to fulfill them. Mm -hmm. So, encouraging yourself with that, this isn't bad, this isn't not normal, this isn't something I should feel shame over. Mm -hmm. It comes down to choosing what do I want more. Like, for me, that was really what I, the place I got to was just my heart's cry, my greatest desire, is for the Lord's best. And I am unwilling to sacrifice His best on the altar of my immediate desire. So if that means me waiting, if that means me standing back, and if it means me being single for the rest of my life, I hope not, mm -hmm. but, and I also don't believe that is, the Lord's given me a lot of clear direction on that, mm -hmm. but I'm at a place now where if that was what He asked, I'd choose it. 
because I know he is so much better. Again, just running back, it's normal. Yeah. It's okay to have those feelings. It's actually a really good thing. Yeah. Because um, it means you are in alignment with God's desires for you. Mm -hmm. But like you were saying, how you, what you do with it. That's really gonna show the level of character you're at, the level of growth you have currently, and the level of growth you need to go pursue mm -hmm. um, is going to be determined by how you process yeah. feelings, yeah. by how you process the attraction, how you process the frustration and the anger. Mm -hmm. That it's such a great telltale sign and opportunity for connection with the father. Right. Like anytime you have a sudden emotion or you have a sudden feeling of rejection or loneliness, like it's literally an invitation for deeper connection with the father. Yeah. Because yes. your loneliness that you might feel like, oh, I want to fill this with like a human because that's tangible, but mm -hmm. the, the most tangible thing you will ever experience is the presence of God, in my opinion. <laughs> you might, and that that's when you can get to the place, that's when you have a relationship with God and you pursue God like you would pursue a person. When you have a relationship with God, you can get to that place where you feel so like tangibly filled with His presence, which is such a real thing and it's such an amazing thing, so don't get freaked out about it, like just go after it because it's the best thing you could experience but if you feel lonely like she said like the best thing to fill that loneliness with is God and getting in the word with God because you can fill that with people but as soon as you leave that leave people that loneliness is still gonna be there like you might feel content in the time when you're with someone but then you're gonna become someone who's like I literally can't not be around people because I feel too lonely mm -hmm. and insecure and that's another thing, finding confidence in Christ in yourself, I'm not going to go into it because again, I talked about that in another yeah. video, but... Because it also ties into what you just described, is honestly codependency. Mm -hmm. You are codependent, your happiness is dependent on another person affirming who you are. Mm -hmm and affirming your worth. Which means when you are in that position, you are completely powerless. And powerlessness leads to fear. Fear leads to a lot of bad behaviors and reactions and will lead you to end up making decisions you never ever dreamed you would. Mm -hmm. All because you were had to be affirmed by another flawed being mm -hmm. that you were worth it. And I've struggled with this Oh, like too. my entire life. Me like too, yeah. I would totally own up to the fact that my greatest weakness um, because of my past and because of how I was raised and grew up, my greatest weakness is a tendency to step into codependency. Mm. Um, so that has been something I have been actively breaking off in my life and actively choosing against. And the Lord has been so faithful in doing that for me and I'm in a really, really healthy place for the most part now. But it's a daily decision because it's yeah. not just something you'll choose in a romantic relationship, it's something you choose in friendship too, mm -hmm. um, or in a work environment. Like, it takes everything. So getting yourself to a place, like for you ladies, no man can ever affirm that you're beautiful. They can never affirm that you're thin enough, that you're fit enough, that your booty's big enough. Mm -hmm. Like, they can never affirm your worth. For you guys, a female, we can never affirm your masculinity. Like, we can't. We can affirm you in moments, we can encourage you in moments, and we can give you fleeting moments of pleasure and acceptance, but it literally has to be your maker yeah. who's going to be affirming you That's in those really areas. Good. That's really good. Which is why marriage and relationship and friendship is never meant to be a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a lifeline. It's not a lifeline. The reason why we hear so much, I think, growing up that you need to like have two whole people coming together to make one whole couple, mm -hmm. it's so true yeah. because wholeness is each person being completely independent in their relationship with the Lord, yep. independently yep. fulfilled, independently in love, and then it's the act of choosing each other. Yeah. So I don't need you. I'm choosing you. Mm -hmm. I've said this before. I ended a relationship before because it got to a point where I was, I can't choose you and I won't choose you out of need for you. Mm -hmm. I want to choose you because I want you mm -hmm. and because you're going to take me closer to the Lord and that's not happening. Why don't you quick describe like your definition of contentment? Well, I actually, I wanted to 
talk about so i wrote down a lot of stuff in my journal when i was with god and i actually just recently like in the past month have really found my true true contentment in god in my singleness and by that like explaining like contentment and what that means is being able to trust god entirely with a relationship or like with the idea of a relationship and and not um, not being so caught up always in like 24-7 thoughts of, oh, I need to be in a relationship. Like you're saying, the need. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be with a person or like- In order to be validated. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like, yeah. I need to, I need to have the title of girlfriend or I need to yeah. have a boyfriend. Almost like it's an accessory that will make you look better to the world. <laughs> That's good. Which is absolutely ridiculous because it's a human being, not an accessory. <laughs> it's not like, oh, the yep. next, the next uh, pair of Yeezys coming out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need the new one because then everybody will like me. Like, being so content good. in who you are and being content in your singleness is not, like I said, being content with being single your whole life and being and not ever thinking about other, like, not ever thinking about having a relationship or not ever having feelings with someone. It's literally being able to say to yourself, okay. I am single right now and I'm okay with that because that's the season of life God has me in and I can trust that wherever he takes me in the next season it's gonna be good because his plans can only be good mm -hmm. and so if the next season of life I'm still single then that's okay because there's probably something in me that he needs to grow and he needs to develop to make me that whole person so I can be the right one for this is something so my parents let me tangent real quick. They're marriage counselors and they have taught me so much stuff. My mom has always said that, and my dad, that when you're waiting, you're in the waiting season and you're single, to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And they've always said, work on becoming the right one for the one that's worth fighting for. Work on becoming that whole person so that you are walking out the plans that God has for you. and you're fulfilling his purpose for your life so that basically like you need to fulfill you need to be walking in your calling and be fulfilling your purpose before you ever get involved with someone else and that someone else needs to be walking in their calling mm -hmm. and fulfilling their calling and being a whole person as well because otherwise they could lead you astray from your calling you could lead them astray from their calling and their purpose you need to be solidified in what your calling is you need to be solidified in your in yourself and be able to, I guess, like the best word to describe it is just being content. And content is just being able to be. Just be still, be who you are, and not seek validation, like you were saying, from another human. Finding your worth and your purpose through Christ, because ultimately he made you, and he's the person that knows you best. He knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah, so I guess that would be like what I would say contentment is for me, at least, like just knowing that I can, that I, I'm okay being single in this season of my life and I'm trusting God and I'm not gonna settle. I'm not gonna settle for less than God's best. I'm not gonna compromise my morals, compromise my my desires for a relationship that I know God's put in me. So I, I guess say for example, like I'm talking with someone and there's interest there and we're like actively um, like pursuing and like trying to see if it would work. My first thing is, do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a church body, like a family, a church family that you that you're going to? Because for me, that's important. If you don't have a church, like, yeah, I understand, like, you might be in a season where you need to, like, go to a new church or, like, you're moving or some people don't go to church every week. And the thing is, you don't need church, like, the building to have a relationship with God and be close with God. But also, there is something about having a church family and being with other people. Mm -hmm having community because like she said, like you were not created to be alone. That's really big for me. Do you have a relationship with God and what church do you go to? <laughs> because if you don't already have those habits and that routine in your life, then who's to say as soon as you get in a relationship with me, you're gonna start up real quick. I don't want someone to start going to church for me. I want them to be at church and be actively pursuing God in a community with other people pursuing God. I want them to do that for them. Mm -hmm. and for their relationship and their closeness with God, not for me or for someone else or because someone else is like, you have to go to church. Like I want them to seek that themselves. For me, um, contentment, I think would I would define it as honestly the abundant life that Jesus promised. I wrote a post on this, which is I think kind of what triggered our first conversation about singleness. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wrote it to, to all my singles. In this one, to all my singles, it was a revelation I had with the Lord um, and he came to me and he was like, Beth, I need you 
to love your singleness the way you love your mess and that's without shame and i suddenly realized that i went through this for a long most of my life i hated my mess and my mess is my past i i always felt shame towards it i hid it i didn't want anyone to know about it it was just so painful um i felt like it can define me and controlled me and then the Lord took me through enormous amounts of healing and breakthrough. And I've gotten to a place where I actually love my mess. I love my places of lack um, because they are literally the, the foundation and the platform for God's glory and for where he's brought me from. The fact that I'm still sitting here today, like that I did make it out, that I did the person I am now, as imperfect as that is, it's such a testament to who the Father is. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you don't, you carry your singleness with shame and it controls you. And I realized I have, I've spent my entire life feeling shame about the fact that I was, you know, early 20s, still didn't have a boyfriend, mm -hmm. Um, didn't feel like the Lord was leading towards it yet and just the continuous questions of why and what's wrong with you and you know like all of the, the stuff you get and it broke me because whenever shame is associated with something uh, it means fear is present first off mm -hmm. but it's also an area where we don't know love unconditionally and it will control you so for me shame in this area of singleness meant I was being attracted to and attracting weak men who didn't want res to respect me, who didn't want to actually care for my heart and know me deeply or know the Father deeply. They wanted from me and it created this pattern of what defined me was how desperate someone was to get to me. It was just like that continuous chase and like that need to be to be wanted so desperately. Mm -hmm. And the Lord broke that off in such a crazy way. And since then it's been amazing because me choosing to divorce my singleness from shame has meant I've gotten to choose shame, choose singleness. Like I literally get to choose it. The father was like, you could go and marry anyone you want. You could literally right now go get a boyfriend. It's your choice. You get to choose what you want. You get to choose what your priority is. Mm -hmm which means he's putting the ball back in my court, which means I'm not powerless. I'm not a victim. I'm choosing something. And for me, I already know, like we talked about before, I know what my heart's desire is. Yeah. My heart's desire is the Father's best. Mm -hmm. So having the power to go, no, I am actively choosing this. Yeah. And I'm gonna choose it without shame. Yeah. I'm not gonna let shame continue to distract me with momentary pleasure that's going to keep me from walking in my calling and that's going to keep me from walking in my destiny. Yeah. I'm not willing to wait. I'm a 10 times better version of myself when I'm standing next to somebody. Every single area, whether it's in the gym, whether it's at the workplace, whether it's in personal life or in my goofy personality or on the deeper level in my relationship with the Lord. You put me next to somebody else and the challenge and the push of someone else's presence takes me to a higher level of depth. And I realize I never want that person to have to be my spouse because that is way too much pressure yeah. for another human being to have to carry that they're gonna be the one to keep pushing me to the higher realm. Like that should never be on them. That should always be me fully with the Father. So stepping into that, it's literally stepping into, the Bible says Jesus came to bring us life and life more abundantly. Are you walking in abundant life right now? Like, or is abundant life something that's on the end of, oh, when I have a ring on my finger, or when yeah. I have the cute guy standing next to me or posting that he just loves my eyes, or mm -hmm. like what, whether it's the job or the career option, yeah, what, whatever it is. what is the finish line for you? That means you're okay to step into abundant life. If it's anything but now, it's not abundant life. The kingdom of God is now, it's here. It's not something we're going to. Yeah. It's not a place we get to, it's what we're walking in now. And it, I know it's easy like to say, yeah. but this is coming from someone who actually chose the process. So for me, this is 10 months into choosing the most painful situations, choosing to be triggered, choosing to face my past, choosing to face my own brokenness mm -hmm. because 
I knew abundant life was going to be worth it. And now on just barely on the outside of it, I haven't even fully tasted it yet and I'm addicted. Mm -hmm. Like literally, I just want to keep going and going yeah. and going. Like the father is so, so good. So contentment for me is abundant life in this area. So abundant life in the area of sing singleness. What is that gonna look like for you? For different people, I think it's gonna look slightly differently. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything's different, everyone's life. Like, my contentment may not be the same as your contentment, or the same as Beth's contentment, or we might not deal with that contentment the same. We, we aren't going to, we're different people. We deal with things differently. Ultimately, yeah. we all need to, they talked about it at church yesterday, about mm -hmm. starting where it's finished. So you're not you're not um, you're not living life on the earth, waiting to get to heaven. <laughs> like, okay, well everything's not going to be good. I mean, obviously in life, nothing like there's things that aren't going to be good, and your best life will be when you're in heaven. But being able to live life in that abundancy and yeah. um, like knowing that Jesus finished everything on the cross, and you can live that out. And like this is going kind of off the t like the talk about relationship, but like honestly, it like. Is. Like, like pain, turmoil, just even like needing healing for something, you're already, when you when you come to Christ, you're already healed because Jesus died on the cross for your sins. It's just a matter of, are you gonna speak life? Like we were talking yeah. yesterday, over something that you were diagnosed with, or, and then give it power, or are you gonna say, no, the Bible says that I am healed, and by Jesus' stripes that shed on the cross for me, I'm healed, and therefore, this cannot exist on my body because if I have Christ in me, no, no, nothing that is bad can exist where Christ is. Therefore, if you have Christ in you, nothing bad can exist on you and you don't give it the power to. And it doesn't mean you don't go through hard things. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. mean you don't struggle. That that diagnosis didn't happen or that, right. that pain or that trauma, uh, that abuse didn't happen. Right. It's giving new vision to A, taking away its power mm -hmm. to control you, but B, putting yourself, positioning yourself to see where the Father is in that. Like he is present in every single one of those moments. And I know we've talked a lot about relationship with the Lord <laughs> and this. But, but honestly, relationship with the Lord is just as For much a relationship as yeah. with a human. Like it is the most intimate place you can be. And for us, at least, like if you're not a Christian, then yeah, you, you're probably not going to relate with a lot of this, but there's no other way I know how to describe it. Mm -hmm. Like this is the life I've chosen. This is reality uh, for me. And this does shape how I view my world. The Lord is the reason why I've overcome so much and had so much healing. If you're watching this right now and you're not a Christian, but you desire, like you're watching this and you're like, wow, they, they, they're talking about this contentment and they're talking about this relationship with God. And like, I want that, like, I want that peace. I want that contentment. And I want to like actively seek that then all you have to do is literally just ask God to come into your life. Just be like, God, I humble myself to you. I repent for the things I've done in the past. And mm -hmm. even though I'll mess up still, cause I'm human, like I choose from this day forward to live my life according to your plan and to come back to you each and every day and surrender my life to you. Die to self and know that your plans are good. And literally all you have to do is just, just tell him like, come into my life, God, and then from that day on, you have to make the choice each day to pursue God and to pursue the relationship with Him. Getting closer with God in relationship actually helps and quickens the process to getting into relationship with another human being. To God, a day could be a thousand days to us. So, does that make sense? <laughs> does that make sense? Like, so for us, a thousand days is a really long time. That's so short to God. His time schedule is just different. Yeah. Like, we... I like to think about it like a puzzle. We are seeing each individual puzzle piece super, super close mm -hmm. to our face. And it looks enormous. It looks overwhelming. It looks like we can never, like, what? This is my world, mm -hmm. this one piece. And Papa, he has the whole vision of the entire yeah. puzzle board. And he sees where that one piece mm -hmm. fits into the rest of the picture. Mm -hmm. Walking in your relationship with God and pursuing God, getting closer with Him, gets you closer to the point where you are going to be with like your spouse or whatever but that might not be for what to you seems a while so you're getting closer to god but 
It could be three years until you meet that person. But if you weren't walking in God's plan and you weren't walking with God and walking towards Him and towards His relation, towards your relationship with Him, that could be extended nine years. But I even hesitate to put that just simply because then it's, what's your motivation for getting to know the Lord then? Like, is your motivation to, oh, if I get close to him, then I'm going to get my husband. Mm, yeah, or then I'm going to get my wife. Yeah, I should have like, explained it better because that's not what I meant. I meant, like, like it, since we're talking about relationship, like, you're trying to seek that contentment. So getting closer to God gets you in that contentment and, like, in the contentment of that singleness. And, like, having a relationship with God should be, like, your sole purpose. Like, obviously, you should have a relationship with God whether because. whether you're struggling with anything. Whether you're struggling with addiction or wanting the desire for a relationship but like just feeling lonely. Like whatever you're struggling with, you should have a relationship with God to fill that instead of, to fill that void inside of you. But what I'm saying is like specifically relationally, if you are wanting to be in a relationship but you're still single, like be okay being single and chase after God because then he'll reveal to you and give you clarity on your singleness, on people that come into your life, whether or not someone is right for you, whether or not they're going to build you up in relationship. You don't want to be with someone that's going to... I always like the example that when you're in a relationship with someone, you should... I can't really, yeah. You should be like walking like this really close. So like in some seasons of life, someone might be a little bit more, more ahead because a person... So like, Say your husband is a little bit more ahead of you because in this season of life you're walking through some, some some stuff, but he's still alongside of you, helping to lift you up, praying with you, giving you guidance. And then in other seasons of life you might be a little bit ahead of him, or vice versa, because he might be walking through something, a family issue, a personal mental issue, like but you're there praying with him, walking with him. It's not like the wife is back here and the husband's way up here, and then he's like pulling her along because that's just going to be tiring or vice versa the wife's up here and the husband's back here you you want to be with someone you don't want to be unequally yoked you don't want to have one bicep way bigger than the other <laughs> <laughs> that's how i'm gonna put it <laughs> for real you want to be equal bicep size <laughs> equal biceps equal quads <laughs> exactly so my right quad needs to catch up with my left it's looking to the father to fill that need because you will never actually step into your best whether it's your best career, whether it's your best uh, relationship with friends, whether it's your best uh, relationship with a spouse, you will never step into your best until the need for that thing is already fulfilled. Yeah. You cannot be choosing out of a need because then it's codependency. Mm -hmm. Then it's, I have to have you. I have to have you affirming me. You have to be present. Like you have to be enough. So that when they actually do fail us, yeah. when they aren't enough, when they do go through yeah. when they do have a really hard time, I just cussed yeah. out everything. I'm sorry about that. How do you have to believe it out? <laughs> when they do go through <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you won't, it won't crush you because they never defined you in the first place. Mm -hmm. They weren't fulfilling that need. They weren't satisfying you as a human being or as your worth. Mm -hmm. um, and you will actually get to fully and joyfully be that stronghold for them then. Yeah, I, the, I like that With, word. Like, you get to have yeah. this. You don't need to have this. You get to. But you get the privilege of having that. You get like the joy that comes with and obviously your true joy should come from Jesus obviously like come on people but like you get I don't know I'm like you get it you get you get to have it and you don't you don't need to have it because you already have fulfilled everything inside you through Christ but God's like I'm blessing you with this this is a present from me to you because you've been so faithful you've been you've been so you've been so steadfast in me that I'm honoring you for that and you're worthy to be honored. And you, you, I always say that you're royalty. And when you are with Christ and you're, you're a child of God, so you are royalty. My mentor told me, she's like, you actually were never supposed to be pouring out of a cup. Like people are only supposed to receive the overflow of our cup. Yeah. Because the moment I tilt my cup to start pouring out. The Lord told me, he's like, Beth, that's actually you pouring out of you. That's not me. Wow, yeah. Me pouring into the lives through you 
is when I overflow you and people get overflow. Yeah. So the moment I start to see, oh, I'm tilting out, that's me giving of my own desperation mm -hmm. and from my own lack, which means I'm not gonna impact that many people anyway mm -hmm. because you're not going to be impacted by my human mess. Right. right. You will be impacted by my vulnerability and willingness to allow the Father yeah. to work through me. And so just if you're in a relationship, evaluating that, what am I pouring out of? Mm -hmm. Am I pouring out or is this in an overflow? If it's not, then where are we missing things? And you know, like where can the Father fill in? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was someone just talking about how trust issues being broken in past relationships mm -hmm. and the baggage that created, does that mean you're not ready to walk into a new relationship? So because you still have baggage from your past or from a past relationship, does that mean you're not ready to step into a new one? I would say throughout your entire life, you're human and you're going to have baggage. Again, it goes back to what you do with it though. Mm -hmm. Like you're not, when you when you release something to God and you, you give something to him, it's not saying, okay, this is completely washed from my memory and I'm never gonna think about it or <laughs> deal with thoughts or insecurities from it ever again. Knowing that yes, I've struggled with this. Yes, I might still have times where it comes back into my brain and I think about it or it kind of messes with me but it's then knowing that when it's coming coming back into your memory you're taking it captive you're giving it to God and saying I release this to you I'm not gonna let this have a hold on me not have power over me yeah. like we were saying before so if you have a crazy amount of baggage in trust and like not being able to trust someone, I would say, honestly, you need to be able to be, I would say you would not be ready to be in a relationship. If you're if you're actually like, I literally can't trust anyone, then you're not gonna be ready to be in a relationship. But if you can say, yeah, I might have some thoughts about trust, but I'm gonna openly go to this person and be like, okay, here's how it is. Honest. I have, yeah, communication in relationship. Mm -hmm. If you have an issue and you're like, okay, I didn't like this, it kind of, made me feel untrustworthy towards you, go to them and talk about it, talk it out, talk it through, give it to God and pray about it. And when you can learn to do that with it, then I would say whether, whatever the issue is, like trust, anything, it's what you do with it. If you're able to take it captive and you're able to talk through it and pray about it and give it to God, then that's a much better place than living in that untrust and like always thinking about it and keeping it held in. If you're keeping it all held in and you're not able to talk about it, then I would personally say you're not ready for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's just because if you can't trust someone, the relationship will fail. Mm -hmm. You need to have trust in a relationship and that is the same with God. He trusts mm -hmm. you with the things that he gives to you. So therefore you have to trust him back mm -hmm. and you gotta learn to trust him with your life. Going along similar lines, but giving a slightly different view. Um, in general, when you come with baggage and you're the question of like, do I, I have still so much brokenness? I still have so much I need to grow in. Am I ready to step into a relationship? Say you do meet a phenomenal guy or a phenomenal girl and it feels like everything's really in a good place, um, but you're unsure about whether you're gonna hurt them because of what you've been through and because of your past. Oh, maybe I'm too broken, maybe I'm too messed up. Um, something someone told me actually, they came up to me and they're like, Beth, you're actually very ready to be a wife. And it's not because you have it all together. It's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're, the reason you're ready is because you are not blind to your mistakes. You're not blind to your triggers. You're not blind to your baggage. You want to face them. You are facing them and your desire is to be in a relationship that's safe where you can grow together. Yeah. You're not asking another person to be perfect, to come alongside you as perfection. You're not putting the expectation of perfection on them, and you're also not holding yourself to that level of perfection either. So that is, and I think it's so true because it's, you're ready when you're coming at it from a place of, we're both messy and we're both gonna grow through this. Mm -hmm. But I want to grow with you. I actually with wanna you. grow up yeah. with you. Yeah. I wanna grow up with you. Like, let's heal together. Yeah. Now I think there's so much to healing on your own. Like you can yeah. take, you can lessen so much pain and trauma 
in a relationship by taking care of your baggage beforehand. Right. Which right. is why, like what you were saying before, choosing into taking your single season yeah. to grow you yeah. is so vital. Yeah. But don't let that stop you because you're never gonna reach the perfection right. that you have in mind. Yeah. Don't let that stop you from choosing to risk it in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you know your why mm -hmm. and your priorities and your heart posture. That's the biggest thing, your heart posture. Are you in a position of need? Or are you in a position of, I wanna grow? And I think you're gonna help me grow, and I think I can help you grow, and I think the Lord is blessing this, and I have peace here. I'd say one more thing before we, we close it, because my battery's flashing, <laughs> is that if you are dealing with something and you're trying to work through it, it's okay to get to know someone on a friendship level. Yes. For sure. And I would honestly encourage that always. First, I would encourage getting to know someone on a friendship basis, getting to see them in different situations, getting to see how they react when you're out to eat, when you're with a group of people, when you're just hanging out like in your friend group. See how they react to things and see the way that they are in different settings because getting to know them as a friend first is when you jump quickly to like intimacy and like all the physical relational stuff that can be messy once you and like kind of bring a bunch of turmoil or like mm -hmm. dysfunction when you don't actually know the person because then once all the butterflies go away your what do you have yeah, what do you have you don't have that like you friendship. you need to have the friendship foundation first so that when all the butterflies go away you can still be like yes you're my best friend i trust you yeah. and i'm going to keep doing life with you whether i have yeah. butterflies or not yeah. So my mom has always said focus on the friendship. I've always said focus on the french fries, but <laughs> similar, <laughs> <That> you know. <laughs> my camera battery is flashing, so we probably should end this. Um, if y'all like have more questions, we could or... do a part two. Ooh, we could do a part two. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah. Or we I was saying like if you could DM either of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll plug our Instagrams always. But yeah, just <laughs> keep in contact with us if you guys have personal questions. I always say if you have personal prayer needs. That you don't want to share in the comments or anything please yeah. dm me please dm beth she's open to praying with you as well thank you for watching thank you for being in this video <laughs> thank with you for me. Having me guys if you have any other questions or anything that you want me to talk about in this series please comment it down below i am more than happy to help you out and encourage you with your life and whatever you're going through and pray with you so yeah make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you like this little series, this is episode two, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely yeah. episode two. I'll probably start losing <laughs> track once I get more, but I'm only into two, so it's okay. I know I know where I'm at. We can count to two. Yeah, that's going to be all, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.